Hey everyone, just doing another tutorial here this time on delegates, uh, so event dispatches in Blueprint. Um, well, they're called event dispatches in Blueprint, um, generally called delegates in C++, and how to set them up. So we'll jump down to the code, and we're going to set one up on the player. And we're going to make it so that when the player, because I've just done the, the overlap and on-hit events, um, and every and the timer and everything on this delegate example, so we're going to make it when the player runs into it that we um, you know, bind to an event dispatcher on the player, um, and we you know get notified every time the player jumps or something like that. Um, so we'll jump to the player class and we want to declare our event dispatches first of all. So they actually go way up top, actually above even the U class declaration. So the syntax we need for these is declare dynamic multicast delegate. And now there's a bunch of different options here. Um, that's fine, and that will just trigger an event without any parameters. If you don't want any parameters, you put in like one param, or two params, three params, whoops. Um, if IntelliSense would catch up, it does actually give you the list of what's available. Um, and so you've got a, a bunch of different types of delegates there. Basically, you've got an actual different macro for each number of parameters, all the way up to, I think, eight. Um, so, yes. We're going to do one with just one parameter just to kind of show the structure, because uh, with the it scales kind of identically. So, we go one param. And now, the structure for what's in the brackets here, first we need its kind of like a structure name, so we're just going to call this like f on player jump or something. So that's the name we'll, we'll refer to it by later. Then we're going to grab its type, so... Um, Oh, goodness. Let's just say we're passing a float for some reason. Or let's a vector. Sure. And then instead of normal parameters where you go like, you know, type name, uh, you actually put a comma between those in this macro declaration. So you've got the name you want to refer to it by, then the type, then the name. So that's it. That's our... Uh, event dispatch declared. So then we want to do, we want to copy this this kind of um, name we've created for it, come down and ah, wherever you want really, but we want to create a public variable. So U property. And in here we want it to be blueprint assignable. That's what's going to let us uh, play nice with it in blueprint. And we'll just make the category event dispatches or something meaningful. And so then that needs to be the name or the type of the variable. And then we essentially give it a name. So I'm going to say like um, player jump or something like that. So that's kind of your core setup of how to actually declare a um, a delegate or a event dispatcher. You've got the declaration up there, and then kind of setting it up as a property that people can interact with here. So that's all that's done in the character. So what I'm going to do now is jump over to, oh, actually, sorry, the last thing we want to do is actually ever call it. So what we're going to make sure that we do is copy player jump, which is now its name, and come down to, I've just quickly put in our, our own jump in, in the inputs bound to that instead, so that every time we jump, this will trigger. So now every time we jump, we're going to get player jump dot broadcast. So dot broadcast is the uh, is the way of calling it. So in Blueprint, it's, it's like call event dispatcher. In C++, it's dot broadcast. And then you just want to put in your uh, parameter. And I've only put one in just to show the, the way that you kind of use them. So it's... Um, Oh. Um, whatever we want here. So just a random vector, just so that we can pass something through. Um, and we'll pass through foo. So that's us broadcasting our vector. So it does know that there's just one parameter of type f vector, despite this kind of weird layout. And it will complain if you're not passing through the correct parameters and everything else. So you want to go the name that we've called the type, so we make our own type, um, and here we go, play jump dot broadcast, pass through whatever parameters it wants, and now whenever we jump it will trigger that 
event dispatcher. But as per, you know, all the event dispatches, nothing's actually listening to that yet. So what we're going to do is just come over here and make it so that when the player overlaps our fields, um, I will quickly need to, obviously up in the header, include our player class so that we can cast to it. So include, what is it, a blueprint to CPP character.h, I would assume. Oh wait, no, no, a. The a is the class name. So blueprint to cpp character.h. Yep. Uh, so that should let us cast to it now. So now, do, do, do on delegate example overlap, this is kind of what we did before. So what we're going to do now is get our other actor. Um, so we're going to say a blueprint to cpp character um, overlapped character is equal to cast a blue, oh, I'm regretting making that class name so long. We cast to that, and what are we casting? We're casting other actor. So that should be right, and then we just want to say if that's valid, so if overlapped character, I tend to use is valid low level. I generally assume that the stuff Epic's put there is kind of there for a reason. Uh, but essentially that's just a, um, a null reference check. So just if that cast actually succeeds, so if what we overlapped was a character, we're going to um, bind to that event dispatcher. So overlapped character, now since this is the type, um, we can say point to now we need the name that we set it up to be. So that's this player jump. So player jump dot add dynamic. And then we want to add this. And then uh, we need a function to actually call when that's triggered. So we're obviously going to want in here to set up a new function. Um, Let's stick with tagging everything as a U function, otherwise it generally doesn't like anything to do with delegates um, that isn't a U function. So void um, when player jumps, uh, and it needs to have the same signature. So up here where we've declared this as effector and location, I'll just make sure that those are the same. So, but obviously without the comma for a normal function declaration, so effect the location. And then copy this, um, actually define the function. Uh, and we'll just say gengine. Um, I heard the player jump, just so that we have something. Um, now this is the function, so that's what we're going to need as the function pointer when we come up here where we were adding to dynamic, which was where on this overlap, so sorry, a bit of a detour there, but when we overlap the player, we cast the player. Um, Overlapped character, so that's as our player class, get the player jump, event dispatch we've set up, add dynamic, this, and then so ampersand for the reference, and that's our function pointer. And that should be all that we need to get that working. So um, to run through really quick, when we overlap the character, cast the character, and this is the equivalent, so this is the syntax for bind, um, if you're kind of used to doing the uh, blueprint event dispatches. So bind this function, so when player jumps, to the event dispatcher, player jump, which we've declared over here. Um, so f on player jump is declared as player jump, and that should trigger. So we'll fire this up and see how it goes. Just quickly check it compiles first. No. Uh, header line 11 of Looks like I've missed. Ah, okay, that doesn't need a semicolon. My bad. A bunch of those macros don't, but it looks like that one does. That's much happier. So 
So load up this, and what the behavior that should be the case now is, so the player has an event dispatcher on it that every time we jump we um, shout out a vector, uh, just a random vector at the moment. Um, and when we overlap this delegate example, we're going to attach the player, or sorry, we're going to attach the delegate example to that. So at the moment I'm firing off that event, but nothing's happening. Um, if I overlap this, now, whenever I jump, it should print out, I heard the player jump. And if you remember, we set that up in the thing, so that's correctly triggering the event dispatcher. Whenever we try and jump, that thing can listen to us, so that's the event dispatcher working as we want it to. Uh, so that's everything. I'll put the code to um, copy in the description. Um, and yeah.